Fantastic Beasts The Secrets of Dumbledore is the 11th Wizarding World movie, the third Fantastic Beasts movie, and just like the previous three Fantastic Beasts movies, is directed by David Yates and stars Eddie Redmayne, Jude Law, and Mads Mikkelsen. When the dark wizard Gellert Grindelwald plans to take the next step in a war between the magical and non-magical worlds, Albus Dumbledore, Newt Scamander, and a team of new and old friends must band together to stop him. If you've been watching my Wizarding World reviews for the past two months or so, plug wherever the little Dropbox thing pops up, you know that I am a huge fan of The Wizarding World. I love most of the Harry Potter movies. I've been enjoying the Fantastic Beasts films so far. I'm just a huge fan of this franchise, even though I haven't read the books. So seeing all the trailers for this latest installment, seeing all the clips that were being released, I was just excited, 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 and my hype just went through the roof so much. And after seeing it, I can honestly say, it's fine. It's fine. It's not good. It's not really that bad. It's just... Eh. Let's just get the best thing about every Fantastic Beasts movie out of the way and just say I love the characters and the actors are all awesome. Eddie Redmayne, Dan Fogler, and the like are still super charismatic and likable as Newt, Jacob, and the rest of the supporting characters. I also really did enjoy the new character of Eulalie, played by Jessica Williams, but honestly, the best character and performance goes to Jude Law as Dumbledore. I'll be honest, when I first heard his casting as the character, I wasn't really thrilled, and although he did a decent job in Crimes with Grindelwald, he still never impressed me. Here, he truly did impress me in this movie, and there was a lot of scenes where just his expressions almost got me teary-eyed. As for Mads Mikkelsen as the recasted Grindelwald, he is good, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty sure I'm in the minority in saying this, I prefer Johnny Depp's Grindelwald. I mean, Mads Mikkelsen was good, as Mads Mikkelsen usually is, but Johnny Depp's performance in Crimes of Grindelwald had this slow, methodical, strategic, and calming voice and tone to him. One that could be threatening, but could also be twisted to be sort of welcoming at times. Here, Grindelwald never really came off as welcoming in my eyes. He just came off as the bad guy, just another bad guy that Mads Mikkelsen was playing, like the bad guy from Casino Royale. He was good in this movie, don't get me wrong, and he had charisma at times, but not to the hypnotic extent that I feel Johnny Depp's performance had. To be fair, I also did like the story. Sure, the pacing of it can be a bit slow at times, and we'll get into that when I get into my problems in a bit, but we're, we're talking about the story. I actually didn't mind it. I'm sure a lot of people are going to point out that it's a political thriller type of story, and that's not really the best and most interesting story to tell in The Wizarding World but I actually did sort of get sucked into it and I did see how this could connect to Grindelwald's rise to power. I don't know, I think a lot of people are taking issue with it, but I actually do sort of like how the Wizarding World, through these past couple movies, have been feeling a bit more real and a bit more like our world, yet still in a way fantastical. And along with that, you got your usual stuff, like the score is pretty nice, and the action and adventure aspect of the film, when they do get to it, is pretty good and really creative. A lot of the action sequences involving these larger than life, more powerful than anything we've ever seen, even in the Wizarding World Wizards, all of their fight scenes actually are pretty awesome and they do feel heavier than anything we've seen with Harry or even Voldemort. But I won't lie, they are very short-lived so that we can get to the story at hand. And when I say it out loud, it doesn't sound that bad, but I don't know. And maybe that leads me into my problems with the movie. 
For one, yeah, the pacing can be a bit too slow at times. The political thriller story is interesting in my opinion, don't get me wrong, but it also doesn't leave a lot of room for the action and adventure that I'm sure a lot of us really love to see in these Wizarding World movies. There are also a lot of exposition dumping scenes that could have been either trimmed or just cut out because the moment speaks for itself and the history between characters speaks for itself, so you don't really need that extra exposition except to just pad out the runtime or just for the sake of being the writer. J.K. Rowling, who wrote the screenplay. Hmm. <laughs> The gray and muted colors that also really polluted the later Harry Potter films and Crimes of Grindelwald has returned here and once again, it just makes the movie look more boring. And the last half of the movie, where all of the reveals and all of the twists come up, that's where most of the movie's big plot holes come into play. Most of the twists in this movie feel either obvious or convoluted. Either obvious because it's been hinted at so embarrassingly heavily or convoluted because it just feels like retconning. Sort of like how Rise of Skywalker retconned a lot of what Last Jedi did in order to try to appease the fan base, And the final ending twist comes right out of nowhere, makes no sense, and when they try to explain it, you just don't buy it for a second. It is so much for the sake of the plot alone, and so that we can wrap this franchise up in just two more movies, that it just narrows down to J.K. Rowling's most overused cliche and most angering cliche, in my opinion, Deus. X Machina! Okay, okay. My anger is misplaced because I am narrowing it down to just one factor of the movie. Because when I look at it as a whole, the movie is not bad. It's not good either. It's... Okay. I still do love following all of these characters. The acting from everyone is pretty good. I did find the political thriller story interesting, and the action, while short-lived, is creatively awesome at times. But the overly muted color palette mixed with the pacing that can be overly slow at times often results in a boring film. And the last half, which is filled with so many reveals and twists, is also filled with so many plot holes and so much convoluted writing. I don't think this is the worst Wizarding World movie. I still think that honor goes to Deathly Hallows Part 1, which is so ungodly boring in my opinion. But even then, this is still far from anywhere near the Wizarding World's best. Even though it's not the worst, it might just be a close second. I'm going to give Fantastic Beasts The Secrets of Dumbledore a B-. minus. Well guys, thank you so much for watching, and let me know in the comments down below, who's your favorite actor to play Dumbledore? Are you a Richard Harris person? Are you a Michael Gambon person? Or are you a Jude Law person? Personally... I might have to go with Michael Gambon on this one. I mean, I liked Richard Harris, and I do like Jude Law, but I feel like Michael Gambon embodies both the wisdom of Dumbledore, but also the pure strength that he has. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are the best, and don't forget to click subscribe and click the bell icon down below to stay up to date on all things movie, all things TV, all things nerd.